you know, cities are delicate creatures and uh, cities are either growing or they're dying. And a city can tip at any point. COVID, you mentioned COVID, COVID changed the world in ways we don't even understand. But one of the ways COVID changed the world is remote work, right? Whoever heard of a second year legal associate telling uh, their boss, you know, I want to work from home two days a week. They would have said, fine, you can do that somewhere else. But remote work said you can work from anywhere. People come into the office less. Businesses can be anywhere. This whole concept of mobility. So you don't have to be in a city anymore to do the job. Uh, You can be in the suburb or you can be a thousand miles away and just come in when you have to. So remote work has liberated people from having to be in the city. And now it becomes a question of whether or not I want to be in the city. And this new mobility happens at a time when you're seeing crime increase in these big cities. You're seeing homelessness increase in these big cities. Uh, You see, if anything, it getting worse, not better. And on top of that, you pay more for the luxury of enduring the urban experience. And a lot of people are saying, you know, I can move. Uh, I can shop states now. I can shop climate. I can move. I have flexibility. I have mobility. And I'm going to look at climate, number one, cost, taxes, number two, and quality of life, crime, homelessness, number three. And cities are on the short end of the stick. And the death spiral for a city, Anthony, and you'll understand this with your business mind, when the city starts to lose the first people to go with the rich people because they're paying the most taxes, when they start to lose the rich people, they start to lose tax base. When the tax base goes down, they provide less services. The quality of the city goes down. More people leave. That's the death spiral, urban death spiral. And I think we have a number of cities in this nation that are very close to it.